So, <clears throat> again, many people have heard of the heart attack gene. This is part two in an update for 2019 on some of the research. This one gets a little bit geeky into specific genetics research. Um, I think most people are probably not going to be interested, but again, we've got a lot of uh, science geeks in our viewer group. So <clears throat> here we go. Uh, but don't say I didn't warn you. Um, so as you may remember, it's 9P21, the chromosome number 9, and then the P21 area. And as you can see, uh, they've done basically some of the research that they did showed um, increased activity in this specific area associated with um, what did it do actually? Uh, cell, uh, cell proliferation, um, cell senescence changes, and basically formation of plaque. Now today we're going to cover an article which goes over the concept that the 9P21 gene is a controller gene. It really doesn't do anything itself. What it does is impact other genes. And here are the two other genes, CDK, N2A, and B. Now, um, before we move on, though, there's uh, one thing I want to remind us to think about. We've done several videos on familial hypercholesterolemia. Those are the people, one in 200. So, again, 40 or 50 40 to 80 people viewing the channel today uh, at, as the, you know, uh, of St. Valentine's Day of 2019, um, 40 to 80 people will have familial hypercholesterolemia. Those are the folks that, um, that's a heart attack gene as well, a very specific, much more powerful heart attack gene than 9P21. It's not the same gene. Um, but it's unusual, it's one out of 200 compared to uh, 9P21, which occurs in 50% of Asian and um, Asian and, and Caucasian gene pool. Uh, that's 50% heterogeneous and 25% homozygous. Um, heterozygous means hetero uh, different, and zygous means two different alleles or zygotes. Uh, homozygous means same and uh, two of the same. In other words, you got one from your mom and one from your dad. Now, <clears throat> we got into, we discussed this before about uh, genotype frequencies. And again, this is a 50% allele frequency resulting in 50% uh, heterozygous, 25% homozygous risk, and 25% homozygous um, non-risk. We've also covered some other things on it. We covered that Beat the Heart Attack Gene is a book by Brad Bale and Amy Donine, and the gene they're referring to is 9P21. We talked about this, uh, this was a big article in terms of 9P21 research, um, and it linked myocardial, uh, heart attack, abdominal or aortic aneurysm, and intracranial aneurysm, all on that same location of uh, 9P21. What, th what we won't get into today is the, um, the research which shows that, yes, this is also the diabetes gene, 9P21, same area, but within a different um, area of 9P21, there is a diabetes gene as well. And the diabetes gene component and the uh, heart attack gene component appear to operate totally independently of each other. They both right now, I think, appear to be controller type genes. And again, we'll talk a little bit more about what a controller gene is in just a minute. Um, let's go back. Okay, so some other representations. This is a 9P21 area, as you see here. But this is the CT CDKN2 A and B genes. Um, what are the CB, uh, CDK in 2 A and B? Again, you don't need to remember that term. It's just that you're going to see this a few times, and especially in the research that I'm getting ready to show you, the article I'm getting ready to show you, focuses on those two because those are the two genes located ne uh, near the 9P21 area, uh, risk area, 
that appear to be controlled by the 9P21 risk area. So, if that was confusing, hang on just a minute, um, and we'll get there. So this was in Nature Magazine 2010. Targeted deletion of the 9P21 non-coding coronary artery disease risk interval in mice. So what they did was they figured out how to alter that 9P21 risk area in mice. They altered it, and here's what they found. It, they tracked four different genes that were nearby this risk area. They found that it impacted two and didn't impact the other two. So taken together, our results provide direct evidence that the uh, coronary artery disease risk interval has a pivotal role in regulation of cardiac CDK 2N A and B. That's those two that I said you were going to see again. Um, expression and suggested that this region affects uh, cardiac artery disease progression by altering the dynamics of vascular cell proliferation. Remember we mentioned that earlier as well. Let's get a little bit deeper. Um, when you look at, as I've said before, if you look at a study, one of the quickest ways to start looking is to look at the images, you know, look at the pictures. That's what all little boys always do, look straight at the pictures. And uh, anyway, so here's the first picture. These are some of the gene areas, and this is where they're, this is that risk area in pink and red. They found it here. Now, as I said, they found four other gene areas located nearby. And here's where, where they are, uh, MTAP, uh, CDKN2A, and CDKN2B, uh, and DMARTA, DMRTA1. So what happened after they found those? They impacted this pink one, and here's what they saw. MTAP, uh, one of the four that I mentioned, here's the four that we, we mentioned. MTAP, CDKN, uh, 2A and B, and DMARTA. So look at MTAP and DMARTA before and after. The black is before and uh, the white is after the um, risk area was, was uh, altered. The uh, MTAP, no, hardly any impact, a little bit of decrease, but not much. DMARTA, a little bit more decrease, not, again, not much. But again, look at CDK into A and B. It just took the, pulled the rug right out from under it. So that's what it appears to do. It, it appears that CDK into A and B, located near the risk area of uh, the heart attack gene, 9P21. Um, <clears throat> those folks uh, have a problem with increased cell proliferation in the vascular cells, and it appears to be uh, smooth muscle cells. So that increased proliferation seems to result in increased plaque. So that's where this risk comes from. Um, <clears throat> just a, a comment on the access side. If you're thinking, how can I get that? Well, I am working on that. You can get it now. Uh, there are a couple of ways to get it. There's uh, one way through 23andMe or uh, I think Ancestry.com has merged with them. Um, but you have to go through some, uh, some gyrations to get there. You can also get there um, um, through a couple of other methods. I, have a, I work with a genetics lab that does cardiogenetics. You can get it with this group as well. I'm pushing the group. I met with uh, Jerry Morrow, who's the op uh, chief operating officer of the company yesterday. What my goal is, is to have full cardiogenetics, um, a craft insulin survey, and the cardiogenetics to include both 9P21, atrial fib, 4Q25, um, uh, several other key genes, and especially haptoglobin. Now, the thing about this uh, lab that I'm working with, my genetics, it's one of the only places, may be the only place right now in the country that you can get haptoglobin um, commercially. The, there's one big uh, academic lab that's in Wake Forest that's doing a lot of that. Why is haptoglobin important? 
I've got several videos on that and I'll uh, do some more to do some updates on it. But again, the goal is to get all of this genetic uh, labs, all of the basic Beldenine or cardiovascular risk type of labs, um, including the, the Kraft Insulin Survey, get it where you can uh, purchase it if you want on your, um, and it, you receive a box at home. And it's like a finger stick for uh, glucose for diabetes. You prick your finger and you put, instead of blotting the blood on a uh, test strip for glucose, you blot it on a piece of paper. You take those pieces of paper, you send them back to the lab, and they give us all of that information. So <clears throat> hopefully I can get them to work that out. If so, then uh, we'll have a huge increase in access to this kind of information. Now, why can't you get it from your regular doc? Well, I guess you could, but your regular doc's not gonna... Here's what the standard medical community said. Look, we know this exists. We know that there's significant risk associated with it, but um, you can't change genes so why look? Why even offer it? Um, I understand some of that logic, but I, I can tell you I've got a lot of people that are very interested in it. I've had mine done, and yes, I'm 9P21 homozygous risk. Oh well. If you've made it this far in terms of uh, watching, I appreciate your interest.